Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, I will try to just to, to give you a, a, a brief summary about the main activities in which uh, my lab was involved in the past years on uh, FDD and ADD activities. And uh, I come from Politecnico in Torino, where I, where I lead uh, the Beda Lab, this building automation and energy data analytics lab that is a, a lab aimed at contributing to bridge the gap between building physics and data science in order to support the novel products uh, of energy management and energy grids. So as you can see, the, the, the members of the lab uh, comes from different uh, background, from computer science engineers to energy engineers to mathematicians. I strongly believe that uh, different backgrounds can uh, really help to exploit all the potential of artificial intelligence to enhance energy uh, management in, uh, in, in buildings. Uh, and uh, this is the, the, the reason why I try to uh, include in the, in the lab uh, uh, different researchers from different uh, uh, engineering background. Uh, so today I, I would just uh, like to discuss about uh, some experience that we gained on decision support system application. And in particular, we organized uh, our research on advanced energy information system and on uh, full detection at the agency systems. Uh, by uh, stressing uh, the opportunity of introducing different frameworks according to the scale of analysis. I mean, uh, uh, on the opportunity to distinguish the, the system level from wood building level, from building portfolio level. And for this kind of scale, uh, we refer to advanced energy information system. While when we refer to FTD system, the scale of analysis is the component level. For example, to analyze and detect anomalies and then to perform a diagnosis on a single component of an irregular unit, as an example. What it is very important is, considering that we are talking about the decision support system, is to probably take into account the feedback scheme that need to be implemented. Here are reported some examples of feedback uh, scheme, like Unatan to more scheduled uh, or event based feedback, because what we uh, realized during our experience is that uh, it's particularly important when uh, we want to build a decision support system based on the application or the analytics framework to uh, probably take into account three uh, important and key aspects. That is the, the level of user engagement, uh, the level of interpretability of the outcome of the analytics framework, and the opportunity of uh, perform uh, abstraction of the, the time series in order to enhance the computational efficiency of uh, the analytics framework, uh, especially when uh, they are uh, applied in real time uh, during a deployment process. So with this in mind, we uh, devoted the uh, uh, effort, uh, first of all, in uh, introducing in literature some uh, frameworks that uh, can help in uh, uh, performing uh, uh, anomaly detection and diagnosis analysis at wall building level. Especially because in most of real cases, uh, just few and aggregated uh, variables are uh, available. In uh, most of the cases, just an univariate uh, electrical load. And uh, so what, uh, was our objective is to introduce uh, some robust process that uh, could help in understanding uh, uh, which uh, uh, could be uh, anomaly uh, patterns of these univariate time series like electrical load, considering that in most of the cases, uh, not too much detailed uh, variable in terms of variety uh, are uh, available. And uh, uh, some experience was gained, uh, especially on, on our campus, uh, Politecnico in Torino, in which uh, uh, was uh, some years ago uh, created uh, a living lab, uh, which uh, uh, collected the 
uh, electrical energy consumption related to different uh, uh, transfer, transformer substation of our campus. Now I'm going to present uh, an EDD framework that uh, was based on the electrical load uh, gathered from a particular substation, that is substation C that serves a, a number of buildings. And uh, for this substation, uh, we have uh, the total electrical load, but also some uh, uh, information uh, on the energy consumption of particular subload, like the Kanga room, data center, bar, canteen administration, and, and shop. Our aim was to try to implement now <clears throat> the process that I'm going to present uh, is, uh, is working online on the Politecnico di Torino in order to robustly detect uh, uh, anomalies uh, at this uh, level of uh, aggregation. So this is the general framework on uh, which uh, we based our uh, process uh, that, uh, as you can see, is characterized by the opportunity of performing uh, an abstraction of the time series by implementing uh, an aggregated uh, uh, symbolic approximation that uh, we realized that is very useful, especially when the algorithm uh, works online in order to reduce the computational uh, cost. And uh, after this kind of transformation to detect uh, uh, anomaly pattern by implementing a supervised learning uh, algorithm. In uh, these cases, in order to take high the level of uh, interpretability, we found that uh, classification tree can be a really good solution because uh, as you know very well, you can transform the results uh, of a, a classification tree in a set of uh, if then rules that uh, can be very easily explained to the users. And uh, uh, this uh, address the need of the high the level of engagement that I, I mentioned at uh, the beginning of my presentation. And uh, in particular, the uh, symbolic aggregated approximation consists on the opportunity of transforming a time series in a string of uh, different symbols and uh, by first to characterize different time window on a time series, and then to assign a particular letter that is a representative of a particular range of the electrical load to uh, each time windows after a uh, 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 piecewise uh, uh, aggregate approximation. And uh, with uh, this in, in mind, we firstly uh, provide a reduction of the total electrical load time series by identifying first different time windows in a day. And these time windows are unequal because they are characteristics of a particular operation of the energy demand of the building. And by identifying, uh, analyzing the real uh, frequency distribution of total electrical load, uh, the different letters in order to transform the total uh, electrical time uh, series, I mean, total electrical load time series, in a, a string of different symbols that are here reported for, uh, for a period. The opportunity is to uh, transform a numerical uh, time series, so total electrical load here is reported. Uh, a cartel plot uh, for a particular period in a different word characterized by different symbols, uh, which can uh, well describe the main future of a daily electrical uh, load. Here is uh, reported for which period in which we uh, split it a day, uh, the occurrence of the different uh, uh, letters, uh, which derived from the uh, symbolic, symbolic uh, uh, approximation that we performed with the SAX algorithm. And uh, what was clear is that for certain period, like period one, which is from midnight to 5 a.m., and for period 
five, that is uh, from 8 p.m. To, to midnight, a very clear occurrence of a particular uh, letter uh, was observed. While for the other period, as you can see, we found a distribution of, uh, of the uh, different uh, letter among A, B, C, D, A, uh, which characterize the, the magnitude of the electrical load. So in order to characterize the occurrence of a particular letter, especially for this period, we uh, can uh, perform and implement a supervised learning algorithm. We decided, as I mentioned before, to use a classification tree uh, by using as input variable uh, day of the week and external temperature, so other explanatory variables in order to characterize the occurrence of a particular letter for each period in which we divided the, uh, a day. So we built for each period a classification tree like this, which helped to understand how to characterize the occurrence of a particular letter according to day of the week and the, the severity of the climatic condition. So in this way, the uh, anomaly detection uh, was performed uh, in a very uh, simple way by uh, analyzing uh, the difference between uh, the actual letter for each time windows of the uh, electrical load uh, and uh, uh, with what was estimated through the classification. So the difference between the actual letter and uh, the letter that uh, was the results of the estimation of the classification tree, uh, alert about the opportunity on, uh, that uh, an anomaly uh, was occurring. So as you can see here, uh, we reported the real total electrical load and also the piecewise approximation for each time windows. And also with uh, the shade of gray for each region, the probability of occurrence of a particular letter uh, estimated through the classification tree. So for example, in this case, it's during the period three or also the period four, a different level of electrical load was observed with respect to what was expected by the classification tree that is uh, represented by the uh, darkest uh, gray. In order to perform a first uh, diagnosis, in order to understand which subload could be responsible of this anomaly that was detected, we also reported here the electrical load re related to the heating cooling substation. And we realized that exactly during the time <coughs> windows uh, when we uh, detected an anomaly at uh, the total electrical load level, also an anomaly operation of the heating cooling system was observed. So we inferred that the main cause of this total electrical load anomaly was related to the not normal operation of the uh, cooling or heating system. In order to, I mean, further uh, enhance the, the, the uh, diagnostics capability of our process, we try to did in another work, a step forward work by implementing uh, association view, view mining. So the, the final aim of this work was to understand if an association uh, can be derived uh, from the occurrence of an anomaly at uh, total electrical load level and a particular subload uh, of, uh, of, of the total load. So the final aim was to understand if a particular sub subload was contributing to generate an anomaly at the total load level. In order to do this, we characterized, other than the total electrical load, again, with uh, uh, an abstraction process, and in particular, we decided to characterize the subloads with the futures, the uh, magnitude of load by implementing again a 
symbolic uh, string ap approximation for rich subload. And then we also uh, extracted from the time series of rich time load uh, another future that is the trend angle, again with categorical variable that uh, can have to understand which was the trend in each time window of that particular uh, subload. So in order to, uh, I mean, uh, derive the association view, uh, had to understand which was the association be between the anomaly detected at total electrical load level and uh, the particular futures that the subload assumed during uh, uh, the occurrence of that anomaly. For each time uh, window, we analyzed first of all the occurrence of a symbol for the total electrical load but that was higher than that expected. And then uh, we uh, associate to this occurrence also the uh, symbolic uh, uh, letter characterizing uh, the uh, magnitude of electrical load of each subload and uh, uh, the trend angle categorical variable. In particular, the association rule was built by considering the right side of uh, the view, the occurrence of the symbol that was detected as uh, an anomalous uh, symbol and then the uh, at the uh, uh, left side, the value of the symbol that characterize the uh, level of uh, load of, uh, of electrical magnitude of the subload and the uh, categorical variable describing the, the trend angle. To this purpose, by filtering out the views that were derived by applying the the associated with mining algorithm, we were able to create an anomaly library. Here I reported some anomaly rules, which as you can see on the left side, report uh, the, the, the letter for each subload or the value uh, which characterized the categorical variable trend angle. And on the right side, the symbol that was uh, detected as uh, anomalous to the classification tree. So by building this kind of library during the uh, deployment uh, phase of this uh, ADD process, we uh, compare uh, when a particular occurrence of a, a symbol uh, was detected as a, uh, anomalous, uh, we characterize which were the condition of the subloads, and then we uh, implement a uh, matching procedures between the characterization that uh, we uh, found during deployment and uh, the views that belong to the anomaly library in order to understand if such use that uh, was observed during the deployment phase uh, uh, completely or partially match with one of the views that uh, were uh, considered as anomaly views. And uh, thanks to the adoption of this kind of ADD procedure, we uh, were able to uh, detect uh, a number of anomalies uh, in uh, our campus, uh, in particular during the uh, uh, summer season of uh, uh, two years ago, we were able to detect a uh, uh, not normal operation of the cooling system uh, by avoiding uh, 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 a cost of about uh, $6,000 of electrical energy consumption due to not normal operation of, of that cooling system. As far as the, our experience uh, is concerned uh, at company level, uh, we focused our attention on particular on the handling unit. It is well known that uh, uh, many handling unit uh, works with the one or multiple uh, faults. And uh, again, uh, by following uh, the 
procedures that uh, the procedure that I mentioned before about the opportunity of performing a symbolic uh, uh, aggregate approximation process. We now uh, worked uh, by exploiting uh, the well-known data set from HIRP1312, uh, uh, a multivariate analysis uh, uh, in which uh, we try to detect uh, anomalies, uh, not only considering the detection of a motive for a discord pattern, but by analyzing the uh, co-occurrence of uh, this that value that uh, uh, two or more uh, variables uh, could have at the same time step, or also the implication that a particular uh, symbol uh, that characterizes the, 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 the load or the value of a variable can imply in a different time step on another variable. We also uh, focusing uh, our attention on the opportunity of uh, analyzing the event where uh, we define an event, the transition uh, between uh, a symbol to another symbol. And in particular, we analyzed the event co-occurrence, so in same time step, but also at the event implication. So the opportunity of analyzing the implication between a particular event for a variable in a certain time step, uh, that is the change from one state to another state, uh, with uh, the, uh, an event that can occur in uh, one uh, or more time step ahead uh, to another variable. Uh, so with this in mind, we decided to uh, analyze uh, both the transient operation of the head, head unit, unit uh, and the non-transient operation. In particular, the, for the transient operation, we work with the, the uh, events, uh, so with the event concurrence and with the event implication, in order to uh, characterize the operation of a, of a handling unit by uh, extracting normal operation rule which uh, could help to understand which was the relation between the, the transition to a particular symbol to another symbol of a number of vari or variables with the implication on uh, another variable. So just for example here uh, is reported uh, a normal operation uh, uh, rule, it is a, a temporal association rule in which uh, we realize that when the speed of supply fund change from state A to B and the external uh, uh, damper, so the, the damper of the outdoor air switch from A to B and the uh, energy consumption from return fund change from A to B, then it's expected uh, during normal operation that supply temperature change from B, from the state B to state A. So in this way, we were able to detect the uh, anomalies uh, during the transient period of a handled unit operation when uh, uh, the rules that uh, we evaluated uh, were violated. As far as the, the uh, non-transient operation, we worked again with the classification tree. So we built an estimation layer, uh, was characterized by a number of uh, different classification tree. Each classification tree was built by estimating a variable with the, all the other variables that uh, were uh, physically influencing. And uh, thanks to the uh, creation of this classification we, uh, tree, we were able to understand the expected value in, during normal operation of uh, each variable uh, during non-transient uh, period. Uh, in other way, uh, during non-transient period, uh, the anomaly detection uh, was performed by comparing the uh, actual uh, value of uh, the uh, of each variable that characterized the handling unit. Uh, with the value estimated to the classification tree. Uh, of course, we again worked uh, with the 
an approximation process. So in this case, the difference uh, is performed between two symbols. And in particular, the difference between two equal symbols is assumed to be zero, while the residual differ from zero if a symbol are at least one alphabet apart from the actual value of that symbol. So we were able to, uh, I mean, evaluate the residuals uh, between uh, symbols for each uh, variable. And then we, uh, starting from the evaluation of these uh, symbols, uh, I remember that uh, the data set available from Ash uh, uh, is available with the, the target faults. Uh, we were able to build again a classification tree that uh, uh, worked uh, as input uh, with the residuals that we evaluated uh, with this process. And uh, as uh, output, can uh, estimate a normal operation of a handling unit, in particular, the normal operation. Uh, is estimated when all the residuals are zero or the occurrence of a particular fault, uh, uh, on the dampers or cooling or cooling back. The accuracy of this classification tree was about 90 percent. Uh, finally, I just would like to talk about an experimental campaign that. Uh, uh, we're going uh, to start in collaboration with another university in Italy, that is the University of, the, uh, of Campania. Uh, we have a handling unit, which is equipped with a uh, high number of sensors. And uh, uh, the aim is to perform an experimental campaign that uh, uh, artificially uh, creates a number of faults and to collect uh, data about this, uh, very similarly to the HRI project and to the LBNL initiative, that of course inspired us in uh, assessing and in setting uh, this experimental campaign. Uh, our aim is to then uh, publicly, uh, to, to publish uh, this data set in order to uh, allow all the researchers to use this data set uh, to perform uh, benchmark activities. Here are reported uh, uh, all the monitored uh, parameters. And uh, here uh, I reported the, the plan of the faults that uh, we are going to uh, analyze. Our faults related to valves, uh, uh, humidifier, uh, fan uh, uh, filters, and uh, dampers. Uh, the experimental uh, campaign will start uh, in the, during the next week, uh, we expect uh, by this year to conclude all uh, uh, the monitoring activities for uh, uh, each, each fault. And we also uh, have a well calibrated model of the head handling unit with the, the building that itself uh, uh, will be used in order to uh, create uh, for each fault the baseline. And uh, just few words about uh, the lesson learned. Uh, of course, we re realized that a very important uh, aspect to consider is uh, the uh, operation of uh, FDD or ABD process in uh, uh, real time. So considering the, the volume of the data, the composition of course, uh, the, of course, the updating of the model. And uh, uh, this experimental facility that we have as part of campaign that we are going to start, I think it, it can be a good opportunity for all the community in order to have data, especially targeted uh, about the different faults. And uh, uh, finally, we will think that uh, uh, an hybrid approach uh, with uh, can uh, well couple uh, a fully data driven. Uh, uh, methodology with uh, an expert-based uh, approach uh, can really help to enhance the performance and accuracy of FTD ADD tools. So we want to work uh, to find a, a good trade-off uh, that can integrate both uh, approach in order to enhance the accuracy and the generalizability of the FTD tools. Thank you.